Hello, I am Jacob Edwards, and I am here to share my testimony for Senior Sunday. I grew up in a Christian home, and God has always kind of been at a center place throughout my life. From an early age, I kind of understood the concept of God, um, and after one session at Iwana, I came and asked my mom what it meant to accept Jesus, and she explained it to me and walked me through um, accepting him. Uh, as my savior. My health has been something that has been a fairly constant struggle uh, since I was at an early age. Um, around seven years old, I uh, went to Disney World and had a blast there. Uh, and I came back with Giardia. And the doctors had no clue how I got it, and they had no clue um, how it really happened. And I just, after that, I became really, really sick. Um, and after I had gotten rid of the Giardia, it was something that I really sh um, was struggling to maintain my healthy lifestyle. At the time, I was a very uh, plump kid, I was a very tall kid, and I, while I didn't see the effects of, the, uh, of what would eventually be diagnosed many years pr on, um, it was something that I had started to um, feel as I began to lose my appetite and various things started happening. But eventually, the doctors through um, various means uh, eventually diagnosed me with Crohn's disease. Um, and that's when we finally knew what we were tackling. My parents, um, I'm always going to be in debt to what, how invested they were in helping me. Um, they, my mom worked tirelessly and my dad worked tirelessly to find solutions. I was first put on a, a diet of gluten-free, dairy-free, um, as one doctor in Cincinnati recommended, as my mom found. And I stuck religiously to that, and I got better pretty uh, rapidly, and uh, it, it seems like things were improving. However, I had failed to really continue growing and continue gaining weight, and I eventually lost weight. Um, as we went through that season of gluten-free and dairy-free. In the beginning, for the first few years, it was kind of just a series of denial, as my life really didn't change a whole lot. I was able to partake in many different foods. My mom, she found alternatives using gluten-free and dairy-free um, substitutes for various foods that I really enjoyed. And um, those, that was something that was a, I was just, you know, I kind of ignored the, the aspect of and presence of Crohn's disease in my life. My health was maintained for the most part, but eventually it slowly depleted um, until we moved to Virginia and we went to see the doctor here and he recommended that we start medication after a colonoscopy. So we started Remicade um, and we did that for about a year. At first, it seems like things were improving, um, but eventually, it we really didn't have. It, it really seemed to have a very negative effect, as the things that I was toler uh, tolerant towards eating really was a very small um, fraction of what a normal person should be eating. My appetite for things just completely went through uh, the shoot, and I rapidly became very skinny. Um, then we switched to Humira after ex uh, expanding our doses of Remicade, and Humira again seemed to work at the beginning, but eventually after a year it failed uh, once again with the same side effects that we had from uh, Remicade. After that, I, we, we stopped the medicine and went back to diet as that had seemed to work for a significant amount of time. We tried several different diets um, from the GAPS diet to the to a banana only diet, to uh, various other diets that really revolved around natural foods, nuts, and um, they seemed to have a good effect, but they really didn't have that thing that we were looking for to really help guide me into either remission or a better state. Um, and I, I struggled with gaining weight during this time as the food that I was eating wasn't supplying and really enough nutrients to be able to sustain me. Now, I struggled uh, a lot with um, being more of an analytical person and not really feeling like I'm having a relationship with God. And I struggled with prayer. I struggled with just having that relationship and just going through the day to day and reminding myself that Jesus is Lord and that I should be living out his example. That really came to a head in middle school when I really struggled to 
know that Jesus was, you know, indeed in my heart and I had accepted him as my savior because there wasn't some substance, there wasn't some, you know, it, it was a very, it felt very abstract and I didn't like that. I wanted something that kind of, you know, a certificate of salvation, if you will. I really struggled through that, um, but through camps like Alpine and also learning more through reading different books about Christianity, I, I learned to accept uh, that abstractness of the faith. And in high school, again, more struggles as they do come. Uh, and in high school, I struggled a lot with just friends and making sure that I was living out a godly life um, and not just being tolerant of whatever people were doing um, and and almost going along with it um, without you know putting forth my faith first and putting forth the aspect of friendship first the aspect of just everything to make sure I felt um, connected into in whatever community I was involved in that has really been the primary struggle throughout high school of just wrestling with that relationship between my friends and also God. Um, I have made significant progress up until now with um, kind of putting God more at the forefront of my life, but it has been a situation that it has been difficult to fully um, accept and fully embrace God in first instead of embracing my earthly desires. Um, but I know from the day to day, I am growing more in that realization and um, I hope to continue that uh, up into the summer and eventually college. The retreats here at BCC are something that I haven't quite experienced anywhere else. They, the speakers are phenomenal. They always bring something out to make, to help you to move towards a um, more God-centered life. I remember in, at one fall retreat uh, in middle school, I was, you know, moved to kind of recommit myself to Christ and as I was struggling with the abstractness of it, I was like, you know what, this is something that I want to uh, embrace and it's something I want to really develop. And so I decided to do that um, one night and the, uh, my small group leader, he got us a bunch of snacks and he was like, yes, yeah, this, this is great. And we were kind of celebrating and I was just like, wow, this is something that I really, really enjoyed. Um, and I enjoyed having support from those around me in my small group and from my leader. That rebuilding of the of my faith is something that I really enjoy, and it's something that I've really has really helped to ground me in Christ. And so, um, I am going to uh, miss those yearly re annual retreats. Uh, and so, but I, I think they have left a significant impact on me, and I and I love going to each of them uh, as they've helped me to grow. My small group has been together. Uh, at least the main members have been together for at least four years, if not the full six years. We've all known known each other. Uh, it has been reshaped through the years, through uh, kids being in the military, coming coming in and out, and moving away or moving uh, here. And so it has seen a quite a bit of evolution. But um, we always are grounded in the fact that. We are there to learn more about Christ, to discuss how our week went, and um, the small group meetings that we do every Wednesday um, is something that you know I eventually looked forward to. We worked to kind of cope with whatever was going on and work to uh, really bring ourselves together as we were going through a difficult time, especially during our senior year. It was it was something that wasn't pleasant, but it was something that we eventually got through. And I think a large part of that comes from the small groups we had here at church. COVID-19 was definitely a struggle for all of us. Um, the way I went through it, uh, eventually it was just, oh, it's going to be over in a few months, and waiting for that day to come when they'd say, all right, everyone, you can go back outside again. Uh, and then the summer hit, and I really struggled. Uh, I think I, I really had a mild depression at the time, and it was hard because I wasn't able to see everyone uh, every week, and it was, it was hard to have things canceled that I had been planning and was excited for. Um, and so it was definitely a hard time to go through that. I definitely began to drift away from my friends as, you know, I really wanted to just be by myself and uh, work, just do my schoolwork on my own, just get it out of the way and, and work on video games or whatever it was. And I just, while I 
you know, I, well, there was the perfect opportunity for me to play video games with my friends. I just didn't do it. I just rather would uh, wanted to be on my own, and that was something that was a decision that I really didn't uh, enjoy the outcome of that. And I wish I had changed that as uh, my summer last year would have really been a lot better if I had, as I came to be rekindled the relationships that I had, the effect of that really was something that I really embraced and I wanted uh, to have every minute. And I spent a lot of time just, you know, talking with friends, reconnecting, and uh, we just relied on each other uh, a lot through this season, as it, difficult as it was. And, um, and I also relied on my family very heavily as uh, my health really declined during this period. Throughout this time, about every fall, I'd come down with some major sickness. One year it was uh, salmonella, one year it was scarlet fever, another year it was uh, just some really, really bad flu. And I pretty much had everything. Uh, and every single time I either had to be hospitalized or I was bedridden for a week or two. And it was, every, it was like tradition, We every Halloween, I'd get sick and I wanted to come back until Thanksgiving. Eventually we found uh, what are called stem cells. The stem cells that I took uh, were taken from discarded uh, umbilical cords and they were things that helped to regrow and the cells in my body that were good. Um, and I really improved. I started, I hit several growth spurts um, after, after each round of uh, stem cells. Um, and eventually, I actually went off diet altogether and uh, really just ate whatever I wanted. And that was something that was entirely my decision. My parents uh, decided that I was old enough to make that decision. And living almost 10 years uh, without being able to eat cheese, without being able to eat milk, without being able to you know, have pizza, that was something that I really wanted. Um, and as soon as you know, the barriers were lifted, I w it was something I really embraced and I really enjoyed. Um, but of course, the foods, they wreaked havoc on my body. Eventually, I reached a point this last uh, winter uh, during COVID where I went in for my fifth colonoscopy and they were like, yeah, it, this is probably the worst you've ever been. This is the worst. And some of the doctors said that it was the worst colon that they had ever seen in their entire lives um, doing colonoscopies. And um, the biopsies that they collected showed signs of um, precancerous cells. So now I was also at risk for cancer. And that put everything at halt. Um, I stopped eating the foods that I wasn't supposed to be eating. And really, we focused on, um, we focused on my health with diet. And we also started med medication. Um, I'm now on Solara. And so I am also being supplemented by the uh, SCD diet. And it's, it's a diet that was developed by someone who has had Crohn's and that's how he healed himself. He actually was in a much worse state than I was and he was able to completely uh, re-engineer his body to, to and un recovered from his Crohn's disease. I use the SCD diet along with the, this um, bout with Stellara and I've really seen uh, many results with that. Uh, along with the uh, really strong um, relate, uh, foundation that I have here at church, uh, people came around me, they came to say that they were praying for me, and um, we, in the church, uh, and the people I knew in the church really came together, um, and they really helped to support me through what I was going through, uh, as um, you know, precancerous cells aren't exactly what you want to hear. Um, and with all of that, I've been, through my last lab results, which actually came out a few weeks ago, I've been able to um, really decrease my inflation numbers. The inflation numbers were at the lowest point that, that had ever been recorded inside my body, um, which was a huge answer to prayer. And it's something that's really helped to um, re reaffirm my faith in what we're doing and also in God. To the people who are struggling with maybe, maybe a disease or something else that has really been putting a hamper on their relationship with God and their relationship with others, um, a word of advice I'd give to you is don't be afraid of whatever um, your bout is with, uh, whether it be cancer, whether it be Crohn's disease, um, or something else. Um, as I know that 
through God, anything is possible. And reaffirming your faith in Him is something that can help you to come out of that situation. And you also have to be acceptive of whatever God um, ultimately gives you. Uh, whether that not being not giving you remission or whether that be something that you may not enjoy it entirely. It's, it's something that is within God's plan and uh, restoring your faith in, the, in that plan is something that you um, can help to really reaffirm your faith in and come to terms with whatever you're dealing with. Um, and that's something that has helped me as you know, I have had a series of ignoring um, the signs that God has been trying to show me and reaffirming that is something that I think is imperative to really moving forward and really help to improve your relationship with God and your relationship with your body and your relationship with others.